Okie dokie. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Greetings from the Canadian prairies. Thank you for being here today. Um, my name is Dr. Punameta, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to uh, be a speaker and share some insights on teaching strategies in the feminist classroom. Um, so I chose the word revisiting because at the heart of feminism, um, and feminist studies in the classroom is a long history of feminist activism um, that's created space for feminist scholars to filter into academia. I think we often forget that the feminist movement started before uh, feminists had space in universities. Um, and so I'd also like to say that the space is constantly under threat um, by conservatives around the world. and who would like to silence those working towards social justice through feminist movements. So I'm mostly revisiting what we already know today in this uh, presentation. So through this presentation, I will explore the transformative power of storytelling, activism in the body in the context of feminist pedagogy. And as educators, we have the responsibility to create inclusive and empowering learning environments that challenge existing power structures and foster critical thinking, incorporating feminist perspectives into our teaching practices. Um, it's a very powerful way to achieve these goals. So by centering storytelling, activism and the body, we can create dynamic and engaging learning experiences that promote social justice and equality. Um, so storytelling for me lies at the heart of human communication and understanding. Um, it allows for us to explore complex societal issues and challenge prevailing norms. In the feminist classroom, we can har harness the power of storytelling by incorporating dystopian fi feminist science fiction, um, which is just one way that I use. But through these narratives, we can delve into gender issues, social constructs, encouraging our students to critically examine and question the status quo. Um, we move beyond theoretical discussions. It's really crucial to connect feminist activisms, activism to student learning. By bridging the gap beyond uh, between theory and practice, we can empower students to become agents of change, encouraging students in feminist activism through projects, campaigns, community involvement. Um, there's so many layers of complexity um, depending on the student, and uh, they can also develop fostering empathy, encouraging critical thinking, um, and still a sense of responsibility to our students. So I really think also this is revisiting the power dynamics of uh, what happens in a classroom, which so many feminist scholars have written about. And so we must rethink the traditional assignments and explore alternatives in research methods. And one such method that I wanna talk about today is body mapping, a visual arts-based approach that allows individuals to explore personal narratives and social identities. Um, and so by incorporating body mapping into assignments and linking it to community work, students are able to um, understand the intersectionality of power and identity. Um, so I'm gonna reflect on some of my own experiences and um, I'm just gonna keep going. I have a lot to say, but I know we're a little behind, but. Um, um, I first want to start off my presentation by saying that I um, am privileged to work and study and live in uh, the Treaty 1 territory of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, the Dakota, and the Métis people. I also acknowledge that the water we drink comes from Treaty 3 territory of Shoal Lake 40 First Nations. Our electricity comes from Treaty 5 territory. I'd like to acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past. The legacy, the legacy still with us today and dedicate that the work that I'm doing um, today and always um, is moving forward in participation with Indigenous communities in the spirit of truth, reconciliation, and meaningful collaboration. Um, and then I just wanted to say also, I am a faculty member at the University of Manitoba. Um, I teach in the undergraduate interdisciplinary health program, um, specifically gender and health. Um, and for the past 20 years, I have dedicated my research training and service to issues related to social um, justice and wellness here in my home town of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, I'm also an author of a book about called um, From Critical to Co Cosmic Consciousness, Feminist Informed Yoga and a Jane Way of Life, um, which I wrote for my doctoral dissertation. Um, and 
Um, okay, so I just wanted to talk, not bleakly, but it's a really good way for me to engage um, students. So I also just wanted to say um, that you can stop my presentation and ask me a question if you feel like you want to. Sometimes uh, um, I have a lot to say, so I might talk fast, but just raise your hand and ask me a question. But I, I just briefly wanted to say that um, storytelling is very powerful, um, especially for undergraduate students where I teach. Um, it has a remarkable ability to ignite imagination, foster empathy, um, challenge uh, established norms. It also allows us to explore complex social issues in accessible and engaging ways. So in the feminist classroom, um, it's really important to dismantle patriarchal narratives and shed light on gender inequality and social constructs. Um, and so through um, some novels, we talk about reproductive rights, gender roles, systemic oppression. So a lot of texts by Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale, The Testaments, Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower um, provides rich material for um, classroom discussions. Um, by incorporating this into the classroom, I create opportunities for students to engage in complex ideas and imagine alternative realities. Um, and then as feminist feminist educators, I would also say that we have the privilege of shaping the learning experiences of our students. By integrating dystopian feminist science fiction into our curriculum, we can harness the power of storytelling to ignite passion for social justice, inspire our students to challenge and reshape the world around them. Um, so I also connect to feminist activism um, in student learning because oftentimes students want to know how is this relevant to their life. So in Canada, many of you know that there was an Idle No More movement that emerged a few years ago here where there's um, a lot of awareness about what was happening with um, the history of uh, residential schools and colonization of Indigenous people in Canada, which is a settler country um, that was colonized. And so when that emerged, Emerged, um, universities across Canada really began to recognize the importance of decolonizing curriculum and how um, we um, are, are, are discriminatory towards certain groups in this country. Um, and so students were really interested in the reconciliation part now in, of, of that. And so, and, and that grew out of feminist activism or grassroots social justice activism. So that's why I go back to feminist activism in the classroom, because I myself was an activist for a very long time, still am, but um, not as much as uh, I, I am now in the university, much more teaching. So um, anyway, so we delve into the critical importance of connecting feminist activism to student learning. It's not enough to merely discuss feminist theory in the classroom. We must empower our students to take that knowledge and transform it into meaningful action. By bridging the gap between theory and practice, we equip our students with the tools to become agents of change. Um, and um, community involvement also becomes important in um, discussions in the classroom, but also who comes to talk to our students. Um, and it plays a vital role in connecting feminist theory to practice. So we, we partner with different local organizations to gain firsthand insight into the challenges faced by marginalized communities, the ways in which feminism intersects with other social justice movements, um, and really important to develop empathy among students. Um, so my next slide, um, I'm just going to talk about, we enter how challenging the power uh, uh, dynamics is created through assignments such as body mapping that we use. And so we use that in the, I use that in the classroom and then I also use it in research. So I bridge both of those worlds. So now we encounter the realm of challenging power dynamics within the feminist classroom through the use of assignments and the unique research methods known as body mapping in our pursuit of transformative learning environments. It is crucial to critically examine and the dynamics of power and privilege that shape our educational spaces. Um, so assignments play a pivotal role in challenging power dynamics. They provide an opportunity for students to actively engage with course material, express their voice, and explore their identities within the context of feminist theory. Um, so by crafting careful assignments, we create space for self-reflection, personal growth, and amplification of diverse narratives. Um, so um, one of the projects that we do uh, that I do is uh, a couple of examples is to illustrate 
um, is a body mapping project where we do memory work and how it connects to the body. So the following, one of the following exercises is an invitation to come into your own body. It's an occasion to sit with what it feels like to be embodied in your everyday life and to explore whether certain concepts or ideas help to articulate these experiences. That is, you're being asked to forge a connection between your own embodied memories, your individual memories, and course-related ideas and concepts of the collective readings that you're doing in a class. Consider that it's a privilege not to notice your body. So an example I give is chronic pain. I assign readings that have offered various embodied experiences. So lesbian bodies, trans bodies, monstrous bodies, reproductive bodies, affected bodies, dispossessed bodies. We consider these experiences differently inscribed, disciplined, and lived. We're also inviting you to explore the body's intelligence, its capacity to remember, and then we read from different passages from our readings, um, from so from different articles. We focused on the body's capacity to remember, um, and we really talk about intergenerational trauma. Um, when we, while we are being asked to recall memories of intimate personal nature, it's important to note that memories can also be shared. Consider how memories are shared. Um, so an example is the oppression: is is it of oppression or is it of privilege? Can we provide the basis for collective forms of identification? Um, Michael Rothberg also argues in the work entitled Multidirectional Memory that memories are subject to ongoing negotiation, cross-referencing and borrowing, remembering as unfinished, partial and incomplete work. So it's okay if you have a memory, you identify, you, I, you, I, you identify, your identity shifts and changes and you continue to refine your project. So um, we go through a bunch of visual prompts. We talk about different, one memorable event. The student uh, has a recollection. They have to pick an experience, a feeling. Um, this could be a memory from childhood and adolescence, immediate past, everyday event. But focus on what comes to mind. Try not to overthink. And then we give them a series of questions. And so we say, like, um, how do you feel? Um, what space were you in in your body? What was around you? Describe the experiences and then reflect on the readings um, about the different types of bodies that we could live in and then what parts of the body felt uncomfortable in the moment. And then we move through the body through different spaces. Um, and then we reflect on the sense and um, the feel and the think your body begins and ends. And then we talk about Again, back to the articles, we talk about virtual cyborg bodies, we talk about reproductive bodies, we talk about companion species, um, body modifications. So we try to be, I, I try to be as inclusive as possible. Um, and then I also talk, so this is like a three day assignment. So this is just one of the assignments that I have created around body mapping. Um, and I'm just mindful of the time and I want to share another uh, community project that I've worked on that I love this project so much and I always love to share this with my students. Um, so I always start off by talking about how arts-based research methods are used in research, therapeutic practices, community settings, but um, they really elicit human experience, knowledge generation, um, and they have really uniquely powerful meaning. So this is an example of a body map that I'll talk about the meaning of the woman who did this beautiful body map for herself um, in a project I coordinated a few years ago. But um, this goes back to how um, activism in the community, in particular feminist activism, this project was about um, uh, mothers with addictions, specifically Indigenous mothers in Winnipeg, Manitoba, with addictions during pregnancy. So um, I, we situated in a discussion around the history of colonization, residential schools, the current Canadian child welfare system that continues to have an impact on um, mothers and babies, the lingering effects manifests in the lives of mothers with substance use, um, and a common coping mechanism for trauma is an addiction, is addiction, which has led to the deterioration of the mother-child relationship. So a body mapping project was carried out with marginalized mothers, reclaiming their cultural and spiritual identities. Marginalized mothers revealed the impact of learning about their cultural teachings, such as smudging, drumming, and seven sacred teaches, teachings that played a role in reducing trauma on their healing journey towards wellness. So the goal is to keep the mother and the baby together um, and create um, 
um, an environment for that mother to learn how to be a parent um, in a in a culturally competent way. Um, so critical to the understanding of was the benefit of a culturally focused treatment that recognizes the meaning of wellness. Um, and so when I share this with my students, they're really, really happy to learn about this. And it's a very, um, you know, decolonizing um, um, approach that this program that I did the project in, that the mothers were participating in were um, able to be part of. So um, what I did with the mothers is for two years, I taught yoga classes with them. And then we became very good friends. And then we developed a research relationship. Um, and then um, what we know about yoga um, is that it's a feminist tool for empowering social change and how it can be integrated into marginalized communities to help heal from trauma is powerful. So um, that's just a little bit um, about the project. And the, the, it, took a two, it took two years um, and really it was about relationships. So decolonization in this community is really about uh, relationships um, and um, so it starts with the process of how you engage with whatever your research topic is. Um, if it's working with communities and how you engage with people, how you build relationships, how you go about relating to things. It's not just about how you build relationships with people. That's the easiest thing. You can easily look at someone at how someone relates interpersonally, but what ex uh, but you can extend that into how you relate with knowledge, how you relate with the environment, how you relate. So I guess it comes down to focusing more on the process rather than the product. So the product is here, what I'm showing you on the screen. But for, for me and um, what I instill in my students is that it's the process that you go through in terms of, you know, whether you become um, a, a medical professional, whether you become a teacher, or whatever it is, because I teach undergrad um, gender and health, and they are really smart students and they want to help. But I say it's not a, just about, you know, a bat like a, a solution it's about this journey we're on as a as a as a community of decolonization and that this was part of it it's a process you know you have to decolonize yourself you have to understand that a community needs is decolonizing that the world is um um not just a solution at the end that you're going to you know have this job so um it's complicated and i really really love what I do and I have so much to say but this woman um, has uh, made a body map of her life and so she writes about um, her life and so she was a mother with addictions and she had been participating in this cultural spiritual program and also in the yoga classes and she says um, as one marginalized mother explains um, the image on the left of the figure her life she says is her mother's slogan is the image painted on my belly it is the mother turtle with her baby turtle inside. This symbol I choose partly because I am from Turtle Clan. However, also because my child is always close to me. Like this, she is always safe. And I know that even when she is not with me, I trust people in our lives who are with her. The turtle to me shows patience, honor, trust, love, firmness, and stubbornness. The body position, she says, is I, cho I chose, shows exactly where and how I felt and what I went through my lowest. Mo more overall, the negative hard times have left my hands, left it behind and are, and with, and with it growing slowly, myself who grew slowly into a new human, a person who trusts and can believe. I have courage, I have strength, I have culture, I have beliefs. I hold so much love inside me now, it almost hurts. However, this is a good hurt, nothing like my past. Years on this planet have so much more to keep going. This is from the bottom of my heart, is honestly started from ground zero. Um, this beautiful baby girl who saved me. The body position shows me my strength, my newfound courage, my never ending drive. And then she talks about her future and she says, something I hold on to also is the street knowledge, a large, long part of my life and the people and the ways I will survive will always be with me. I envision my future working towards a great career, not a job that's work. However, something I look forward to going to. I want to be a helper. Um, and then she goes on about talking about what she wants for her daughter and her life. So it was a very like... Um, 
for me a, a very feminist project, but then for my students, it's a very powerful project. And then um, I get them to do a body mapping project as well. And so I get them to read different books. And um, at this time, we did do a feminist storytelling uh, self-realization through autobiography of a yogi. Um, so I like pull out these books from the woodwork and I'm like, yeah, let's read this. And uh, so they, they, they did this project. Um, and uh, I'm just going to skip through a couple of pages because I don't want to run out of time. But um, on this project here, so what they do is um, uh, they reflect on the transformative learning experience that arises from integration of storytelling, activism in the body, in the feminist classroom. So um, not only do they learn about it from a community perspective and a project that I share with them, but also through a project that they do about their own journey in terms of writing their own storyboard about um, self-realization. And then they actually go on to do a body mapping project in the classroom. And um, they do that memory work assignment that I talked about earlier. So it's a very like... Uh, about uh, I would say I spend about a month doing this in class and uh, um, it really gets students to share personal experience encapsulates the transformative power of of, of uh, these strategies in the course on feminist literature I assign a project where students are asked to create a digital storytelling narrative that explores a feminist issue of their choice. So one student chose to focus on the experiences of women in the male dominated STEM field. Throughout her digital storytelling project, she not only demonstrated her understanding of feminist theory, but connected it to real world activism. She interviewed women working in STEM, captured their stories, presented them in compelling and engaging manner. This project allowed her to bridge the gap between theory and practice. In addition to personal experiences, I have received numerous testimonials from students who have experienced the profound impact of these teaching strategies. Students have shared how storytelling has allowed them to find a voice. Activism has empowered them to make a difference and body mapping has provided a platform for self-reflection and self-acceptance. One student expressed through these assignments in this course, I discovered the power of my own narrative, the importance of using it to challenge societal norms. I realized that my voice matters and I can actively contribute to creating a more just and equitable world. Um, so I just wanted to conclude the presentation by saying that in the feminist classroom in higher education lies our commitment to fostering inclusive and empowering learning and environments and by incorporating um, storytelling, feminist activism and body-based research methods, we can create space that honor diverse experiences. Um, and uh, I think I lied, I do actually have one more slide. What is the future of the feminist classroom? So we really need to embrace um, the multiplicity of identities and perspectives. Um, we really need to get students talking to each other as opposed to um, hiding and not sharing how they feel about things. Um, I think the classroom is a revolutionary space that is one of the few spaces that allows for total freedom of the of humanity. And I think that um, as I'm a middle aged person now, I feel that it's a privilege to be able to, you know, facilitate those spaces, but we need to protect those spaces um, in universities around the world. Um, so really, we need to strengthen our community and just, you know, keep that strong. And, um, um, and, and never forget our roots of feminist activism. So the, that's the end. Thank you.